So we're going out on a service call here. Not a service call. <laughs> going out on a roof. The one story that always stands out to me from our customers um, are the stories of people that um, talk about how a CSA share in their family has brought them back to the table. Funny, the name Second Nature has double meanings in that, you know, it's always been Second Nature. We've had this kind of gift to be able to pick a product that people like. We um, reach for minimal packaging just because of my personal ideals. I prefer less waste. We are lucky here in Vernon County. We have the highest density of organic farms in the whole country. Our community really came through. My name is Kathleen Sullivan. I've been a board member at the Vernon County Historical Society since 2012. And my name is Kevin Alderson, and I've been a board member since 2010. And uh, we both want to welcome you to the Vernon County Historical Society Museum. The Historical Society is a membership organization um, serving the whole county. Um, we rely on membership donations and we also receive funding from the Vernon County government as well as the city of Viroqua. We have four buildings. Today we're in one of them, the Vernon County Museum. There, this building served as the normal school training teachers for Vernon County from 1919 to 1971. Um, it became, Kevin knows more of the history of when it became a museum. Yeah, actually the organization uh, started in 1941 when a person by the name of John Dawson uh, founded the organization. Eventually he donated his house to the Historical Society, but um, unfortunately there was difficulty in maintaining the house in terms of funds and so on. So eventually that house was raised and it's the current site of the Vernon County, or Vernon Memorial Hospital. So after that period of time then, the museum was moved into a room in the hospital, but it wasn't too long before the hospital needed more room and so at that point then the museum was moved into the courthouse, two um, rooms in the courthouse. Again, that had its uh, upside and downside. Eventually in 1961, the uh, county board bought the old St. Mary's Church and the St. Mary's Church then became the museum. Uh, in 1963, the four acre school was bought and moved from Liberty the Town of Liberty, and that was added to the museum. And then as Kathleen said, this building then was purchased in 1989 and has been the museum ever since. So in addition to the County um, Normal School, which is our museum now, and Four Acre School and Old St. Mary's Church over on Broadway, we, our fourth building is the Sherry Butt House, which is a Civil War era mansion that is a fully furnished museum and on uh, Main Street in Viroqua. So managing those four buildings is done by, um, we have two part-time employees, a very involved board, and almost 100 volunteers who are involved each year. Um, the two people who work here at the museum are Kristen, who has a degree in anthropology and almost 25 years experience working in museums. And then Carol, whose background is in um, interior design, which, and she has 17 years experience working in museums. So her design background helps her 
um, make really wonderful displays and exhibits and those exhibits here in the museum are changing. We have a couple, several new things every year. So besides the two employees, we have seven people on the board and um, they have all kinds of backgrounds. We, an organization like this needs people with carpentry and building skills, um, financial background, all kinds of um, skills go into running a small organization like this. And about a hundred volunteers, who some of whom come once a week or once a month. Some people get involved with a special activity once a year. We have people who bake cookies um, and prepare other refreshments. We need people to give tours to groups who come through the museum. There's always light office work. Um, could be folding newsletters, could be filing information or doing research. And um, probably any skill that a person has, if they came and contacted us, we would find a way that they could help. So really, when we, when we talk about why we have our organization, the purpose of the organization, our mission statement, is to preserve and promote the history of Vernon County. And uh, Vernon County, essentially, the first settlers in this area were here in the mid-1840s. The first settler in Viroqua was 1846, in fact. And our history, of course, goes back well before that with Native American background and so on, all of which is included, or much of it, included here in the museum. Um, some of the highlights as far as Vernon County history, in 1884 there was a history book written about the history of Vernon County that was kind of like done throughout the nation with a lot of counties, and that, that is kind of like the absolute best source of early Vernon County history. So the Vernon County History Book of 1884, which we have here. And then in 1907, there was a person by the name of Earl Rogers, who was a Civil War officer who wrote something called Memoirs of Vernon County, which is also a great source in supplement to the 1884 book. In between, there was a Charles Porter, who became famous, was a um, local historian who felt it was very important to mark the Black Hawk Trail. And so the Black Hawk Trail with seven different markers that indicate that American tragedy that took place in 1832 was one of his brainstorms. Um, eventually that evolved into the creation of the Historical Society and the Historical Society founded in 1941 has operated almost continuously up until the present. There were some periods of time where there were difficulties as far as getting members and being able to support things. But I think that really was changed with the hiring of a curator in 1959 by the uh, board, county board, and then also the acquisition of a building in order to have the artifacts, uh, artifacts from the county that people wanted to keep someplace. So it's, a, it's our it's my view as a historian that it's very important for people to establish an identity and the way you establish identity is to understand the, the roots and the backgrounds and the preceding individuals that have come before us in the county and in our families. latest book as far as on a county level 
that was produced as the Vernon County Heritage Book, which would have been the 100th anniversary of the original Vernon County History Book that came out in 1884. And uh, this organization has always, from the very beginning, starting with the Vernon County Board, has been a county organization. I mean, notice it's Vernon County Historical Society. So we're talking about all the way to the far east at Hillsboro, to the far west on the Mississippi River, uh, north to essentially Cashton and south all the way down to Reachtown, and of course Viroqua and Westby being somewhat in the center of all that. And so this truly is an organization based upon county participation, and it is a county history. And that's why I like those all-inclusive county history books. We um, really appreciate people from across the county visiting the museum and the Sherry Butt Museum House and coming to events. There are a number of things that the Historical Society has done traditionally for many years. The 4th of July Strawberry Shortcake Social, which is always held on the lawn of the Sherry Butt House, um, is a really nice community gathering um, it takes place even if the temperature's 95. Um, the community band that forms every springtime from several communities always plays, and the men's chorus sings, and everybody enjoys strawberry shortcake with ice cream. Um, we do have a plan, if it were to rain, it would be moved to a building on the fairgrounds just right behind the, the Sherry Butt House. Another annual event since 1989, most years, has been the Candy Cane Tour of Homes, which takes place in the beginning of December. Um, that is something that we'll probably need to change with the times. Um, it's, sometimes it's hard to find families that are interested in having their home on the tour, but it is um, something that's been an enjoyable community uh, tradition around the holidays. Both of those events do help um, raise money to meet our budget. There are um, other events almost every month during the year. Um, we usually have a cemetery walk in June at one of the local cemeteries. And volunteers agree to take on the role of a person of, from Vernon County's history who is buried at that cemetery and they, um, the staff here work on researching that particular person and then the volunteer is in character. Um, I think it's a fun way for people to learn more about history. Um, and then the other months of the year we often have a speaker in the evening and that could be a person who's written a memoir about Vernon County. Um, pretty much every year we have an archeology span related program um, we've had Native American leaders speak. Um, it could be a, a, one of a number of topics. And those often bring 30 or 40 or 50 people into the museum. Being, being primarily, for me, a um, longtime history teacher, and I'd like to think at this point a local historian, um, my primary largest attraction to the museum, there are many attractions for me, but for me, I'm very much into research. And so I like to come here, and um, as do a lot of people, to research uh, family history, uh, uh, church, local church history, one-room schoolhouse history, the history of this building, the history of some of the other architectural buildings throughout the county. There are uh, birth records, there are death records. We have a huge collection of obituaries that are here. Uh, there are uh, tombstone engravings as to the tombstones throughout the entire um, Vernon County, all the different cemeteries. And just in terms of being a researcher, without mentioning too much the books that I've been involved with, uh, in both cases that I was involved with writing books, this 
museum was, played a very major role in terms of researching uh, what's known as the Cheyenne Valley community over by Hillsboro, where there are a lot of things here. And then also with, uh, I found out from this museum where a Civil War soldier we wrote about is buried. And so here's a guy that we wrote about and found out in this museum where he was buried because of the cemetery records in this building. And so for me personally, and not just me, but anybody that's involved with family history, the genealogy aspects, wanting to find out what's happened here in the county and tracing your roots and so on. I mean, this, this is the central place for that to happen. And from that standpoint, I know Kathleen and I have both talked about one of our goals in the future, which might come up later, is we would really like to reach out uh, more and ma make it known what we have here, especially to area schools and so forth. Because the schools require projects in fourth grade as part of the Wisconsin curriculum. And being a past history teacher, I know that we encourage an awful lot of projects. And if you're talking about uh, Civil War, World War I, World War II, famous individuals like Jeremiah Rusk, uh, your own personal family history and so forth, there is, there is no better place to start as a history teacher than to come right to the Vernon County Museum. And, and I have to say, when I was teaching, I don't think I was fully aware of what all is here. And I kind of regret that. So if uh, any teachers are out there listening, I, I really want to encourage you and your students to uh, come here and look for some of these answers to projects and so forth you'd like to do. And the Cheyenne Valley area that Kevin mentioned is a very interesting uh, community in Vernon County history. And a, recently we had a researcher from Harvard who came here to find more information in pre preparation for uh, an exhibit that's at the Museum of African American History, part of the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. So um, they came here to find the, the facts about this community, which involved um, African Americans, some of whom were freed slaves, some had never been slaves, Native Americans, and people of European background. They lived together in a community. They had a a, a soft community softball team together. The kids went to their one-room school together, and it was a just a very nice example of a um, peaceful, integrated community, and in, um, in which is part of Vernon County's history too. There are all kinds of. Um elements that go into that, whether we're talking about the Scandinavian and or other in, immig immigration that took place to the county, whether they're talking about uh, steamboat history on the Mississippi, whether we're talking about Cheyenne Valley, the uh, multiracial community, which was way ahead of its time, and even to this point, uh, the Amish community, because we have the largest Amish community in the state of Wisconsin, um, one of the largest actually in the nation at this point. And with the population of Vernon County around 30,000 or so, probably 10% of that now is Amish, which uh, we have an exhibit at, which I was really happy to see when I was looking through exhibits, because one of the, I think one of the keys to history is everything that's happened in the past, of course, fits, but so do the things that are creating history currently. And one of that is the uh, Amish moving in, and then also the, the whole idea of the green movement and organic farming organic valley and in both cases when I was looking through exhibits we have new exhibits on those subjects which it's uh, as Kathleen said constantly changing I mean if you come to see the museum one year and come back the next year don't be surprised that you'll see some of the same exhibits but you'll also see many other exhibits that have been rotated out by our curator staff. One example of an area that frequently changes is the military history section where there are um, various uniforms and trunks and swords and pieces of equipment that have to do with a particular um, historical period. And during the sesquicentennial of the Civil War, 150 year anniversary of the Civil War, for five years the, the exhibits upstairs were focused on aspects of the Civil War. and people from Vernon County who fought or were involved some way in the Civil War 
um, Andersonville prison, people from Viroqua or the Vernon County area who were in that prison. Um, and then after that period of five years of focusing on the Civil War, we transitioned to the centennial of World War I. So the United States got involved in 1917. Um, and so for a couple of years, the exhibits upstairs will focus on the, the connection of people from Vernon County with World War I and how the uh, people in, in, were very involved in volunteering with the Red Cross. There were all kinds of activities that women did back on the home front while many men were in Europe fighting in World War I. So that's an example of a kind of exhibit that transitions over the years depending on um, a, a link to something that people are talking about during an anniversary. I think what Kathleen said there is, is so important because from the standpoint of, of history and having been a history teacher, it's all about connection. And somehow, in some way, you have to take the people that are in your audience, in my case in the past it was students and now it's adults at programs like this, and somehow show how they have a direct connection with this history. Because there are so many people that unfortunately have been brought up in such a way that history is something that happens in the textbooks and in a sense it does not connect with me. And if you take, as Kathleen was talking about the Civil War, we have a Medal of Honor winner, Francis Waller, who was buried at the Retreat Cemetery, who won the Medal of Honor at the Battle of Gettysburg on the first day of July 1st, 1863, by capturing the second Mississippi flag. Now all of a sudden, when you know that there are, there are Civil War heroes that are buried in the county, and maybe that's a perhaps relative of yours, that is a direct connection. Something that happened recently, I was over here doing some research for some reason, and um, our curators, Kristen and Carol, are doing some work, as Kathleen said, about World War I, because we're now having the centennial of that, and they were transcribing letters from a soldier, and, and this, this is um, fact, but unbelievable. Is, is while I just happened to be there, there were people that came in from northern Wisconsin that presented a picture uh, of a World War I soldier from Vernon County because they thought that since it was a family member but it had more appropriate uh, display here, they brought in the picture and the picture is of the person that they were transcribing the letters for, which was, just, I mean, amazing. And that's, a, that's the kind of thing that every once in a while happens. And I guess for me as a historian, it kind of sends chills up my back because that's my thing. And so it was almost like some of these things feel like they are meant, in a sense, meant to be. And we talked about the Dawson who founded the Historical Society. His father, John Dawson, was almost killed at the tornado in 1865, barely survived. And so in addition, Dawson, was the architect who volunteered his services for the building of the St. Mary's Church, which is one of our buildings. And so the more, you, the more a person digs into this research, I think the more circles that are created and the more connections that are made. And that being the case, then it, um, it is uh, very, very meaningful. Recently, the Youth Initiative High School, uh, one of their projects was to paint a mural out at the, what used to be called County Farm. And I thought that was so great because we as a historical society at that program, the unveiling, provided some of the history in the background of what they had painted, but they did the painting. And I thought that was such a great example of how a local high school was directly involved with Vernon County history and the maintenance of that history. Another way we've been able to help younger kids connect with history is that for, for many years, all third graders at Viroqua area schools have done a unit in the springtime about pioneer life and the history of Vernon County and Wisconsin. And as a culmination of that unit, each classroom spends one day in the four acre school and they each student takes on the role of one of the kids who would have attended that one room school. Um, so some of the kids get to be first and second graders and other kids get to be a seventh or eighth grader. And they have to bring a lunch 
bucket with them to school that would be the same kind of thing a student would have carried a hundred years ago. And they go through a school day of what it was like to, to be educated in a one-room school with all the kids in one space and one teacher having to teach different material to all those levels of students. And I think that really helps make it come alive um, for, for third graders. And then we're, we're back to connections because that third grade one-room schoolhouse um, we're in, as we mentioned, the Vernon County Normal Teachers School, in which 2,000 teachers, mostly many from Vernon County, ended up teaching in some of those very schools that are now preserved, such as the Four Acres School, and as one more example of a connection between this building in the one-room schoolhouse we have and current students that are being given the opportunity to see what it was like. And so it all just uh, continues to travel in a circle. There were about 2,000 graduates from this building when it was the Vernon County Normal School. And then in later years, it was called, I think, Vernon County Teachers College. Um, but I know people in the community who graduated in the 19, late 1930s as teachers and still come to programs here. Um, we like to celebrate the alumni of the normal school and they have a, an annual reunion. Um, so there were, there used to be 160 one-room schools around Vernon County and many of the graduates of this institution. At first they had one year of training in 1939, it switched to two years of training and then they would go out and teach all grades um, and in, in one of those rural schools. And um, volunteers here have, re have recently completed a database where we have been able to find as, it's pretty complete, the list of teachers who taught at each one of those rural schools and what years they taught. So if you knew someone, um, a great aunt or a relative who was a teacher at a one-room school, you can probably come here and we can look in the database and find out um, what, what school they taught at and what years. Or if you're interested in a particular school, you could see the list of teachers that taught there. And so 1919 is the centennial of this building, so we're observing that for a few years. The, when the um, teachers training program moved into this building when it was constructed in 1919, first graduating class in 1920. They had used other spaces prior to that to train teachers, but that's um, the history of this building. And in fact, the alumni are very active, but they're also financially supportive of our um, museum and, and uh, pretty much every year help to fund some kind of project that is uh, needed for the museum. So there's a good, a really good relationship there. And in fact, one of the programs that's just been started, which may again be added to later, is the honor roll, teacher honor roll and school honor roll where each of the schools in Vernon County and or any teachers from Vernon County are honored here at the museum. Um, they are basically nominated by individuals and it, uh, they eventually can reach the point of being on our honors board based on uh, economic backing of each one of those nominations. So it's, um, this is great. This is, it's a great place for the museum. There's, I can't think of a better place for the museum than in this building. And of course the other buildings we have too, but the, the central part is here. In addition to the third graders from Barocco Area Schools who spend a day at Four Acre School, the fourth graders also come for a tour of the museum and for the Sherry Butt House and for their springtime field trips. And we have involvement from some other, um, of course, school districts in other parts of the county. The Prairie View 
af elementary school after school program has brought kids here on a field trip. And um, there have been students from the Westby area. Um, I gave a tour to a daycare group of kids from a daycare um, in, in Westby. So we, we hope to expand on that. Yeah, I kind of forgot kind of forgot that part because we do have the students come to the school but we also have a lot of quite a few school tour groups that come here to the museum, to the museum. and we've had a lot more participation by a lot more schools in that program than we have say just at the one room schoolhouse because in that case they're getting they're organizing a day and in this case they're organizing a couple hours of their day one thing I think that's kind of helped us to a degree is since um, school budgets are so tight, then field trips have been somewhat more limited and people have had to look closer by as far as attractions and inadvertently we have become more of an attraction to local schools because I think their budgets support coming here more than they do go to going to other places farther away. And there are other school systems that don't that, that struggle to have the money for a bus just to come here, That's even true. if it's a short distance. And there are other communities where People will donate money for a specific thing, like transportation for school groups to come to the museum. So if a, a person thought that school tours was a really good idea or field trips coming here, we, it would be nice if we could help out the school district when money is the reason why they can't bring mm -hmm. students here. And we always have uh, tour guides, qualified tour guides, tour guides available. So yes, Both highly, highly qualified expert tour guides. <laughs> well, Kathleen as well, but we have several different people that do tour guides and are, are tour guides and, um, and have a good time doing it. And we could always use a couple more people who just be, you know, become basically familiar with the exhibits on the upper levels of the museum. So the exhibits are a main reason that many people come to the museum. And for years, we were really troubled by the fact that to reach the exhibits, which are on the second and third floor of this building, um, there were just staircases and no elevator to, for people of any age who would have trouble with stairs. So we were very, very happy to finally um, finish a long period of um, raising funds and then the process of hiring an architect and construction firm and um, raising money ra and raising more money and um, the elevator was completed in 2016 we would have had the grand opening in the fall of 2016 so now, you know, a group of kids, a group of a school group, a group of senior citizens, a group of people from an assisted living facility can come and um, tour all the exhibits, as well as many of our volunteers who are older, and they can now work in the in the exhibits upstairs as well. is the process of the capital campaign that it was called uh, included three basic phases. One was to get the entrance and also the parking lot handicap accessible, followed by this room. I mean, this room has been a tremendous addition. It used to be the old boiler room uh, for the normal school, and instead now it's, our, it's kind of our meeting place. We are able to hold our programs uh, on site which has been a great addition. So that was kind of like phase two, and then the biggest of all the phases was the elevator. And uh, really that goes back to, what, 10, 15 years of the project. And there are so many people that played such a huge role that um, if we started to name some, I'm not sure we would be able to do that without missing many. But it's just been a, it's been a major production for many years, of which we were kind of fortunate just to be at the kind of the tail end of this whole thing, the second push. So we happen to be here now, but we wouldn't be here with an elevator if it wouldn't have been for all the people that have worked so hard in the past. It. it was probably a 10 or 12 year process to have to move, to put in the parking lot 
here where the main entrance is now, facing Main Street in Viroqua. The entrance to the building used to be on Center Avenue, mm -hmm. the, the, what is now the back of the building, and we don't use those entrances anymore, although our mailing address is still 410 South Center Avenue, which is kind of confusing to people trying to find the building if they go by the street address because mm -hmm. we don't use any entrances on Center Avenue anymore. The, we people enter from Main Street where there is parking and it's completely accessible to come in the entrance off of Main Street. We, uh, restroom and this conference room are all accessible. And so finally at the end of 10 or 12 years of working on these projects, the elevator was completed as well. And it looks very nice from the outside. Yeah, I think that um, would be a great thing to film because one of the things that really really has, uh, what would I say, impressed me is this building is on the National or State Register of Historic Buildings. And, it's on the National Register as well. Yeah, and to be able to put that modern elevator in to such a degree that it looks like it's always been on the outside part of the building was real, really well done. On the inside as well. They were very careful to um, put all the interior trim back in a way that it looks it's all original materials or very close facsimiles. Yeah. We're very proud of our museum and we're very proud of the community and the county for having supported the museum. It wouldn't be here without a team effort. And we wouldn't be able to make each of these improvements which makes it more accessible to more people without continuing financial support as well as all the volunteers who pitch in on many, many projects. So as far as people coming to the museum, over the typical year, we have well over 3,000 people who come to visit. Um, some of them come to use the research facilities, the archives, and others come to look at the exhibits. Um, we often have um, 70 different communities around Wisconsin mentioned as people sign in in our guest book. We um, have visitors from 30 or so states typically in a year and from a handful of foreign countries. One of the things that's available to anybody who wants to get to know the city of Viroqua specifically better are um, we have updated three walking tours which were first started in the 90s in the 1990s and um, by you know by 2016, the, the, all of the names of the stores on Main Street, many of the names of the stores on Main Street had changed. Um, so our curator worked very hard on updating these walking tours. There are three separate tours, Heritage Hike, Courthouse Trail, and Main Street Meandering. And they have between 10 and 20 stops and a uh, a map to show you where to find these historic buildings and a little sort of a biography of that address, what businesses have been there over the years. So when you have family from out of town or could be a school project, you just, it's a self-guided tour to walk around Viroqua and learn about um, the, the history of these local spots. Yeah, as we, as we look to the future, um, very optimistically, but at the same time with reality, is like so many other organizations, uh, membership is always an issue. Some of our really extremely valued members um, have left us from the standpoint of um, passing on and finding individuals to essentially carry on the traditions in that standpoint is always a challenge. So we're constantly looking for a um, membership, younger members to move things forward in the future. We also, as uh, technology has changed, whereas it used to be we weren't looking at necessarily 
computer experts and uh, website experts and so on, all of that area has, uh, we've had some folks that have joined us that have really helped in that regard, but keeping up with the time, so to speak, is something that's always been a challenge. And then financially, like so many other organizations, uh, trying to maintain this building and maintain the Sherry Butt House and also at least play our part in the maintenance of the other uh, two buildings, the Four Acre School and St. Mary's Church. Uh, if you can only imagine if you own a home, if you're trying to fund the maintenance of your home, you can imagine what the funds are necessary to try to maintain these buildings. And that in terms also includes all the utility aspects and uh, paying salaries to our part-time curators. And so fortunately, at this point, the uh, county has been very supportive have continued that support over generations. And uh, they have been very supportive. The city of Viroqua has been supportive and we have done significant amounts of fundraising. And especially when it came to the elevator, there were large numbers of businesses and significant individuals that made major contributions. And so the support has been there, but the support has to remain there because we can't, we can't survive without uh, volunteer, both funding and volunteer time, so. And the Vernon County Historical Society is a 501c3 organization, so contributions are tax deductible. Ways of getting in contact with us um, include the website, which is at vernoncountyhistory.org. Um, there are other Vernon counties around the country, so well, Missouri, for sure. you have to make sure you're getting the Wisconsin site, the Wisconsin version of Vernon County, but vernoncountyhistory.org is the website. There's also um, a Facebook page, and I think if you just go to Facebook and look for Vernon County Historical Society, um, that is updated every few days with upcoming events and just little interesting pictures that one of the curators likes to put up seasonally. Um, the street address is 410 South Center Avenue, but we're really located at the corner of South Main Street and South Street or South Avenue, whatever, South and Main Street. And that's how you access the parking lot. And the phone number is 608-637-7396. So lots of ways to get in touch with us. And for a museum our size, uh, I'm, I'm very impressed by the hours that we're open because during our winter hours, where we're open the least, it's three days a week in the afternoons. And over the course of the summer, it expands to six days, six days a week. And there are a lot of um, communities I've gone to where the museums are very hard to get into because their budgets, again, it's no fault with them. It's just they very have a very hard time staying open. So this, uh, this museum is very accessible from the standpoint of hours. And the staff are here more than the hours that the museum are open and things can be arranged by appointment as well. If you had a group that wanted to tour outside of the hours that the museum is open to the public, for example, that just just call and see if something can be arranged. Another thing that's been very beneficial is our curator, and actually curators, both Kristen and Carol, have uh, written weekly articles that go in area newspapers. It used to be, for the most part, not, not out of, again, anybody's fault, most showed up in the Viroqua papers. But one of the things we were able to do recently, last few years, is they now are in the Lafarge papers, the Viroqua papers, I think they're in the Westby papers. At least they've been made available to the entire county. Again, because of the fact that we want to be seen as, and we want to demonstrate the fact that we are countywide. And that's one of the things I know I'm, I feel good about because I'm from the Lafarge area. And in a sense, I'm, I'm from Lafarge, but I'm in the Hillsborough Historical Society. I'm in the Cheyenne Valley Heritage Association. I've kind of specialized in the Kickapoo Valley. And so there's representation from that part of the county. We have several members here from Viroqua, but then we also have someone from uh, Retreat, live over by the river. And one by Ferryville. And we would uh, certainly in the future, one of the things we would look for is, is a diversified board from all over the county. 
and that's something we try to promote. It's not always you know, are we able to achieve it, but achieve that, but we try to promote that.